Green joining us here at the Broadcast Center. The new Red Sox third baseman, Adrian Beltre. Good morning, Adrian. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing good. Uh, how is the process going? New place, new team, new teammates, new uh, rules and regulations. How, how are you assimilating to the new uh, way of life of the Boston Red Sox? It's been pretty easy. Uh, everything is, you know, kind of um, just smooth over here. And then normally used to do a lot more stuff in spring training. Uh, and over here, since a lot of uh, veterans, I guess, uh, it's a little bit more... Uh, more easy. Who's been helpful? Who's been who's reached out to you and said, "Let me show you the ropes." Uh, everybody. Yeah. I think everybody has been, you know, uh, welcome me fine, and uh, so far I feel really comfortable. Did you uh, have any? How's your relationship with Mike Lowell so far? Obviously, he, he's the guy here before MVP of the World Series. We know it's a little uncomfortable. Has it been like that for you in the clubhouse or on the field, knowing that that Lowell's still around? Not at all. Not at all. You know, I I know Lowell since the minor league. We play against together, and uh, you know. Uh, we always talk when we play against each other. We talk when we got here. You know, we have everything uh, uh, clear, and uh, we you know we know uh, what what to expect. And uh, I think we really good uh, uh, situation right now. Did you have any reservations coming here and placing him? He's a well liked guy, well you know, well respected guy in the clubhouse. Of course, of course. You know, the first question when the the Red Sox called my agent and said that they uh, they were interested in me, I said, you know, uh, what about Mike Lowe? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, that was the first question because I know uh, Lowe as a player and I'm, I'm a big fan of him, great person. And, uh, you know, when the uh, <clears throat> situation come up and they told me that, you know, he got some injuries and stuff like that and, uh, and he probably won't play there anyways if he can not come here. So that made it a little easier for me to come. Was it a tough decision? We know you took a one-year contract. You're out to prove, you know, that you can earn a, a long-term deal. You had a chance for a three-year contract? And you went for the one-year deal. Was that a tough decision, or was that an easy one for you? Uh, it wasn't that tough because, you know, uh, thank God, uh, financially, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty set for now. Uh, and I just take my chance to, to come to a team that have a really good chance to, to win the World Series. You know, I haven't been in, in, the, in the playoff for five years, last five years, only once in my 11 year in, in the big league. And uh, a chance to come here and uh, put a ring on my finger is something that, you know, I take the risk uh, to do anything. The one-year deal essentially means you're in a contract year. You're playing for your next contract with the numbers you put up this year. Does that change your preparation, Adrian? Does that change your approach? Does that change your mindset when the regular season rolls around? Not at all. I think my main goal here is to win a championship. Mm-hmm. And uh, the numbers, are gonna, they're, they're going to come. You know, you're trying to do your best to help your team to win, and the numbers are going to take care of themselves. When you had the huge year in L.A., the 48 and 121, was that had anything to do with playing for a contract? Did you know that you... You know, if you had a big year, you were going to end up getting a huge deal. No, not at all, because I never thought that I, could, you know, I can put those numbers. I never done it before uh, up, to, up to that point. But you know, uh, I think, as a matter of fact, it was the first month I started hitting good, and I think the confidence level just take off, and I just, just, you know, kind of uh, anything went wrong for me that year. Everything went, was kind of uh, the right direction, and I just, uh, I took, took a little, little, little slow, and uh, you know, you, you see what happened. As an opposing player coming to Fenway Park, what's your impression of the way baseball is received at Fenway? And do you think it'll feel different since you'll be wearing the correct uniform starting in, the, <laughs> in April? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I play uh, against the Rexos for a while, and uh, I always was admire about the uh, situation with the fans. The mm-hmm. fans were really supportive, and every time I came to the ballpark, it was full. It was sold out. You know, it's something that you as a player, you kind of uh, take a little more uh, extra probably uh, motivation to play better and to push, you know, because they – it seems like they have some uh, something to play every day, and I think some some players kind of uh, need a little kick in the butt, uh, in the butt to uh, you know to try to do better for the fans. So players can take that energy and use it for them. Oh, of course, yes. yeah. The last four or five years, whenever anybody talked about you, was oh you can't hit at Safeco Field. Mm-hmm. Did that mentally factor into your mindset that you were just a product of that park and you had trouble hitting there? Or why why didn't you hit well there? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, you know, the, the first year was really tough for me coming from, you know, uh, from the National League and uh, coming to a new ballpark, which I didn't know how it was going to be. Uh, the first uh, couple of months, I realized that, you know, balls that normally hit and go out, hit the wall, uh, they were turn to an out. And sometimes on, uh, at, some point, at some point, I kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, get a little frustrated because yep. inst- instead of having a hit, it's an out. And your confidence level kind of goes down a little bit. But, you know, I learned to live with it and... Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a tough ballpark, but you cannot say that I didn't have good numbers because of it. You're you're uh, 30, and you've been around a long time. You uh, actually have a chance of 3,000 hits, which is kind of uh, something. I mean, not you're think, not thinking about now, but can you change your approach and be more of an on-base percentage guy, be more of a patient hitter at this point in your career? That's kind of what they look for in guys here in Boston. Well, I, yeah, uh, I'm not really that type of guy, but I can try. 
you know, I, sometimes I think that when I'm patient, it's, it's not working too much for me, you really? know. So, but sometimes when it goes good and I see the ball better, I'm patient. So it's something that's kind of, you know, uh, in between. Uh, it's no doubt that uh, it's something in my career that I should change. And hopefully, you know, learning from Big Papi, you know, uh, JD and those guys over here, something that something can be uh, coming good out of my, uh, you know, offenses numbers. We're uh, talking with the Red Sox third baseman Adrian Beltre. And uh, Adrian, are, are great defensive players born or are they made? Both, I think. You know, uh, I don't think uh, that I was good when I came up to the big league. You know, I kind of worked my, my way out. And, uh, you know, people said I have potential. But, you know, uh, I work hard every day to get better. So when I came to the big league, I was mainly offensive guy. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be uh, kind of a more 50-50 or, or whatever. But, you know, I uh, take pride in my difference. I play, I work every day at it, and I'm trying to get better. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that need to, to improve. Beside the hard work that you put in to be a great defensive player, what, what skill set do you have? Is it, is it response and reaction? Is it quick feet? Is it footwork, hand-eye coordination? What do you think is the best thing you have going for you that allows you to play that kind of defense? I think it's more determination that I want to make every play I can. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, I maybe have a little, a little bit of all those stuff. Not great. You know, I don't, have, I don't think I have a great feet or accurate throw. But, um, you know, I just every play I want to I make every play. And sometimes end up being negative for me because a, a ground ball that hit the line should be hit, I end up probably getting to it, throwing the first and throwing right field. You mm -hmm. know? Well, sometimes it, uh, it's not good to go like that, but, it's you know, that's my mentality. What else are you good at? Are you a good ping pong player, a good pool player, I can, good I golfer? I can play some ping pong. I, can, I started playing golf uh, about two years ago. What does the defensive skill, how does that translate <laughs> to other things? I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, um, uh, Pimpo had nothing to do defensively because I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know. Smashing? Uh, you, you smashing like, balls. <laughs> <laughs> are, you like, are you like Forrest Gump when you're playing ping pong? Yeah, pretty much. I'm not like, trying to like, hit the corner hard so I don't have to hit it again, you know. But, uh, you know, defensively is something that is more reaction than anything, you know. Right. Offensively, you kind of have think too much and worry about your mechanics a lot. You know, defensively, especially third, is more reacting to the ball, whatever comes, and uh, sometimes you don't have even time to think. And uh, I think one of the, the things that are probably make me a little bit better because I don't have to think. What's your golf handicap after two years? Uh, oof, I think it's about probably 15 over. Fif yeah? 15 handicap. So you shoot in the 80s, high 80s? Yeah, me, me 80s, high 80s. That's pretty good after yeah. two years. Oh, yeah, I can get, down and get, a, down and get right. better. Well, good to meet you. Appreciate the time. Uh, thank you. Adrian Beltre with Dennison Callahan. Every guest with Dennison Callahan this week down in Fort Myers.